This is Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast where we bring Jesus into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Hey guys, welcome to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. My email address, jason at sportsspectrum.com. Would love to hear from you. Any ideas you have on future guests or thoughts on today's show, you can reach me directly, jason at sportsspectrum.com. And we are presented today by the International Justice Mission, IJM, believing every person deserves to be safe and free from violence. You can check out their website, IJM.org slash TF to become a freedom partner and join the fight to end slavery in our lifetime. IJM.org slash TF. We're also presented today by Compassion International and COVID-19 and the pandemic has left nearly 70,000 children without a sponsor right now. And Compassion is teaming up with pro athletes for these children in poverty, and you can team up to become a part of it as well. Check it out, Compassion.com slash team up, Compassion.com slash team up and donate and help release a child from poverty today. Art Warren is our guest here today on Sports Spectrum. Seattle Mariners pitcher Art was selected in the 23rd round of the 2015 MLB Draft by Seattle, played his high school ball in Napoleon, Ohio, and then after he got drafted, went through the minors, actually played his college ball at the University of Cincinnati and then at Ashland University. And once he got drafted in 2015, he went through the minor league system, as many baseball players do. He was in Clinton, Bakersfield, Modesto, Peoria, Arkansas, and just grinding through the minor leagues, only reached as high as double A. But then at the end of 2019, and he'll tell the story here on the show today, he reaches the major leagues. He gets that call up and makes his major league baseball debut on September 12th, 2019 for the Seattle Mariners against the Cincinnati Reds. And he did pretty well in 2019. He pitched in six games in the majors and gave up zero runs, struck out five in five and a third innings. That's pretty good. He's got a powerful story. He talks about that. The way he describes getting that call to go to the majors is worth the price of admission when you listen to it here on the show. He had some down times as well, going through a time with Tommy John surgery in 2014 that really allowed him to kind of go deeper into his faith and see who God really was in his life. Take a listen to Art Warren, Seattle Mariners pitcher, joining us here today on Sports Spectrum. Art, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Good to see you. Good to talk to you. I love that we can tape these on Zoom now so we can actually see each other. Right. Um, How's this pandemic been for you? Aside from the whole baseball, what are we going to do? Are we going to play? Aren't we going to play? Which I don't think we really need to dive too long into. We'll know pretty soon what's going on. But how has this pandemic been for you? A guy who's hoping to pitch himself into a role with the Mariners in 2020 and spring training comes and then we all press pause. Yeah, it's 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 been uh, it's been different. You know, nobody knows how to handle a situation like this. Um, for me, what I've done with my time is that I've spent a lot of time with my family and friends. So I've been trying to take advantage of that because you know, every day I wake up and I'm like, man, it's June. You know, today's June twelfth or so, and it's like I'm not used to being home June twelfth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so it's just like, and then you know, when I came home in March, it's like, okay, I'm home through April. I'm home through May. And I'm home through June. Like, I haven't spent my birthday at home in quite some time. And so that was pretty cool. So what I've been doing is just trying to take advantage of the time down with my family. And just, you know, for example, like, trying to remember what an Ohio summer would look like. You know what I mean? So that's what I've been doing. And I've been, uh, like, building a deer blind as well to try to keep me busy. And then obviously trying to stay in baseball shape. So that's pretty much what my quarantine has looked like. All right, so I'm a. I have no idea what a deer blind is. I can kind of infer and guess that has to do with Just hunting. Imagine, but what is? Imagine it? a imagine a small little like house with windows and a roof. That's pretty okay. much covers the gist of it. Okay, all right, well, that's good. Well, how are you? How are you coming along on that? Are you finished? <laughs> it's done. Yeah, I finished it. <laughs> Yeah, the boy. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'll try to drag it out as long as possible to keep me busy. That's good. That's good. Now I saw initially. You were part of this thing, the night on the sandlot that took place, like right, probably a week or so after 
baseball Correct. was put, put on pause. What was that about? Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, so I believe it was put on by Trevor Bauer and his uh, filming crew, Momentum. And it was basically to raise awareness. Um, I cannot remember what it was for exactly, but the whole goal of it was to raise money and awareness. I think they actually did a pretty good job of that. So what they did is they filmed it, Momentum filmed it, and, you know, there's people, they did it through Instagram Live. And so, you know, thousands of people were coming on and, and just getting to watch, like, basically major leaguers play backyard baseball at such a relaxed atmosphere. So that was pretty special and pretty cool. You know, they had security and all that because they figured, you know, once the the broadcast started showing which little league field it was in Phoenix, a lot of people in the area would start to come out, you know, try to watch. But uh, it was pretty cool. It was for a good cause. It was, it was really fun. No, that's awesome. That's good that you guys were doing that. What's been the workouts like for you in this quarantine? I talked to a bunch of guys, some pitchers, some hitters, and, you know, a few of them had places where they could go and work out. Uh, initially, nobody could really go anywhere, um, but then they were able to find a place where they could go and get some throwing in or go and get some, some swings in. What's that been like for you, these workouts, and how have they evolved maybe as, you know, the, the you know, restrictions have been lifted a little bit? Right. That was pretty much my, my situation from the fellow athletes that you talked about as well. You know, when this thing hit, everything was closed and they have a facility. And then when I got back here to Ohio, I had where I went to school, I was able to get some access in the weight room there. So that's been kind of like what I've been doing is working out in the weight room there. And then, uh, you know, like over the weekends, you try to try to make do with what you got. So like I ordered this uh, band body, like it's like a uh, like a little workout kit that has this black platform with metal hooks on it and you got these colorful bands and you know the different color like green is like a, a medium resistance and like a yellow is like a high resistance and i've been trying to do just band workouts and stuff like that so i've been trying to get as creative as possible as possible during this time i bought a new truck in in arizona in march and it's a bigger truck it's lifted and so i was pushing that down the road trying to get a leg workout in that so you know, we're talking all ends here. We're, we're he's trying to get as creative as possible. Well, you're a big boy. You're 6'3", 230, and you throw gas. So I have to imagine that that's important. <laughs> but I got to ask you, I got to ask you because, you know, when you're preparing for a season and you go to spring training, you're throwing a few innings and you're getting in the motion and in, in, in the mode to be ready. I, I talked to um, Liam uh, from the from the A's a couple of weeks ago and – Mm -hmm. uh, Liam was telling me, you know, the closer of the A's, he's like, I was ready to go second week of March. We had to stop. And so I've been trying to stay ready to go since. And I know it's different for a lot of different guys. Uh, but for you, as you saw what was happening and knew that you weren't going to be pitching for a while, did you kind of revert back? Some guys have done this to where you would be normally in, say, December, January. Yes. Or did you just stay throwing consistently? No, as soon as – I mean, exactly like Liam said, I, we were in, we were one week or two weeks away from, from getting ready to go. Right. And, you know, mentally and physically, we're where we needed to be. And then once this hit, we were told to back off as if we were in – and we were even told back off as if we were in October. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you start to think you're literally just finishing the season, you know, and it's like what's your routine like at that point? So you try to revert back to what you've done in the past off seasons and go off that. And so for me, I, I backed off. I didn't, I didn't want to continue competitively throwing um, just because who knows how long it was going to take, you know? And, and so at the same time, you're also trying to maintain at a level where you can ramp up as soon as possible. And so with that being said, it's been such a difficult balance to try to figure out, okay, you know, at what point are we returning? At what point do I kick it in to make sure that I'm in a phase where I can ramp up as, as, um, as smooth as possible in terms of health, right. you know, and in terms of uh, uh, making sure like you're polished up and ready to go back for the spring training 2.0. So that's been the, the difficult phase of this whole thing is we, we've never been through this before. We don't know how to handle this. You never, you don't know how to handle from going at almost a hundred percent to down to 40%. You know what I mean? And then like, how do you figure out to get back up to hundred percent, yeah. you know, in the safest way possible at a time where you have no idea when we're going to play. Yeah, it's confusing. We'll have to see what happens. Art Warren is our guest here on Sports Spectrum, the Seattle Mariners pitcher. Napoleon, Ohio. Take me back to <laughs> Napoleon, Ohio, and the memories that stand out when you were 
a kid growing up and go to Napoleon High School? It's a, uh, it's a smaller town. Um, I didn't go to a bigger school. You know, some of the surrounding schools, you start to get to like Finley and Toledo and whatnot. You know, they start to graduate like anywhere from 400 to 500 kids. For us, my class was the biggest class in the school at the time, and that was 200 kids in high school. Um, growing up, I played football and played baseball growing up. Never never got into basketball. Um, let's see. I was uh, – let's see. I was a third baseman in high school and growing up, and I actually liked to play the field a little bit more than I liked to pitch third just because I was, I was involved more. You know what I mean? I was able to play. I was able to hit. Um I was able to get dirty. When you're on the mound, you don't really get that opportunity a whole lot. So, you know, when you see a fly ball as a pitcher, you, you go after it, everything you got because <laughs> those, those opportunities are limited. But uh, I played high school in football or I played uh, football in high school and then stopped my senior year when I found out I was going to go to college to play baseball. And so I just solely focused on baseball in my senior year. And I went to Cincinnati as a two-way guy and then uh, transferred to Ashland as a two-way guy. And that's when I had Tommy John surgery in 2014 and, and just went to a PO, a pitcher only. What's that so that's like kind of having my the, background from the point to the college. What's that like having that Tommy John surgery? You were at 21 at the time, you said in 2014. So I'm just doing my math here. That had to be uh, tough to kind of have to go through. I think it's tough for every person or pitcher that I've ever talked to that's had to go through Tommy John it's a setback and there's a lot of things that you can learn during those times. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was, uh, it was mentally challenging for sure. Especially once I tore it, you know, I heard from the first doctor I saw, he told me and I quote, you should strongly consider just going back and playing third and finishing out your degree because you will most likely won't be able to pitch again. Wow. And when I, yeah, when I heard that, you know, that, that tore me up. And so I went to got a second opinion from Dr. Kremchek with the Reds and he told me the complete opposite news and he was way more positive and, and, uh, encouraging. And, you know, he wanted to get me in surgery right away. So that, that helped the mental aspect side. I picked up guitar. I tried to pick up guitar during the rehab to get my mind off of baseball and the rehab just because it's such a long process. And, you know, you feel good for three days and you have a setback and you feel good for two days and you have two days that you don't feel good. So it's just a roller coaster of emotions. And uh, so I tried to try to learn a little bit of guitar to take my mind off it. Um, but that was back in college and I started taking school a little more seriously. I was I got um, I got put on the dean's list for grades academically. So that was pretty cool. Nice. Um, <laughs> That's good. Uh, so. So, yeah, you know, there were some positive things in it. I uh, definitely started to lean on God a lot more at that time. That kind of woke me up a little bit, and, and, you know. And at that point, I, I said, and I know I did another podcast where I was quoted saying this. At that point, moving forward, I said, I'm pitching on borrowed time at that point, you know, because the way I saw it was when I, when I was healthy, it was, like, all about me and my, and my arm, and, like, I can control it. And then once this thing goes and you start to realize, you know, at any moment, your career can be over. You're not actually in control of everything like I thought I was. And so, you know, I started to have this mindset of whatever God gives me from this move, this moment on is just extra. It's a bonus. And I'm pitching on borrowed time. And so with that aspect, I've been able to enjoy the game a little bit more than, than uh, I was in college. Because in college, I was trying to put a lot of pressure on myself. And, and you know, I was thinking that baseball is more so a way like, you know, I have to get drafted. I have to do this and have to do that. Hmm. and I'd be disappointed if I didn't do that. I'd feel like a failure or whatnot. But yeah. once that happened, it basically, for a moment there, I was like, okay, the game's taken away from me. And then once I got it back, I was like, okay, now I'm pitching on borrowed time. You know, Now what I do with the rest of my baseball career is just a gift from God. Take me through that, that journey of faith for you, where it kind of started, how it took shape, and you know where you kind of had that moment. It sounds like it was when you had Tommy John and you realized – how uh, not in control you are, and we all mm -hmm. are. Really, the pandemic can, can remind you of that, too, of Absolutely. how not in control we are. But take me through your process of faith and where that kind of took shape for you. So growing up, I, I didn't go to church. Um, my mom, my mom's mom, my grandma, is, was a Christian, and she would always you know, talk to me growing up and say, Art, you know, like she'd give me a Bible, and, and she'd just preach a little bit to me and try to educate me on Jesus. And 
know, as a kid, I would listen, didn't want to listen at the time, pick a little, you know, uh, learn a little things here and then kind of just like, okay, like I'm done on this. You know what I mean? My mom is a Christian. She just doesn't go to church as often. And so I wasn't brought up in the church. Um, so I started, as I got older, I started talking to my grandma a little bit more and more. And I was like, grandma, you know, I want to learn more about God. I want to learn more about faith. You know, I want to be more invested in that. And so she started to teach me and talk to me and pray for me and, and help me understand how to go about praying. That was one of the biggest questions that I had is I don't even know where to start because I don't know how to pray. You know, is there a proper way to pray and this and that? And so I, I was completely uneducated on any of this. And so she, you know, told me how to go about and, and kind of guide me into, into prayer and just what it would look like to become a Christian and how you, you know, you give your life to Christ and, you know, once you make that commitment, you change your lifestyle and, uh, you know, try to repent as much as possible and whatnot. So my grandma was the, was the, the forefront in me becoming a Christian. I would say, you know, I was able to lean on her and, uh, and go back to her with questions. And she was always willing to talk to me and educate me and whatnot and, and challenge me moving forward. And my wake up moment, I would say, you know, and, and then I got baptized as a freshman high school on my own. You know, I was like, grandma, I want to get baptized. So she set it up for me at uh, our St. Paul local, local Lutheran church. And I had one of my best friends, uh, parents be my godparents for that as well. So that was a really, then we had through a party at our house afterwards and it was just really bad my friends and family. Like the amount of people that I had show up for that, the support group was, was awesome. I honestly didn't know that that many people would care about it, you know? So that was like an aha moment, like, you know, being accepted in the, you know, the brotherhood of faith and, and a brother in Christ. And I would say my aha moment was when I had surgery, you know, I had my entire life planned out of being a baseball player, my whole life, you know, whatnot, you know, baseball never ends, you know, all those thoughts. Um, but when that was taken away from me, it kind of opened my eyes and said, Hey, you got to start, you know, putting your time and your, in your mind into something else other than baseball. You know, you got to rely on something else other than baseball. And for me, I started to fall into my faith a little bit more and more. And I was like, okay, you know, God, how do I do that? And what I came to is you have to trust God in everything that you do. And for me, I just said, all right, Lord, like, here's my life. For the first time in my life, like, I'm giving you everything I got. Do with me with what, you know, what you will. And I'm, and from that moment on, I've kind of always had this mindset of, you know, like, God, how can I serve you in baseball? You know, you, you bless me with a, with a million-dollar arm. That's what they call it. Um, just you know, um, you know, you, you get blessed with a million dollar arm as an athlete and okay, how do I use my platform? God, how can you benefit from me? How can you work through me? And so, you know, I've been trying to figure out ways to do that. Um, for me, there was a special moment in my baseball career in the minor leagues in 2017. I had a walkout song. It was, it was a rap song. Um, pump me up, you know, walk out song is when the pitcher heads on the field, you know, there's, there's a minute and a half of, of each song that they want to play while they're throwing their eight warm-up pitches. Right. Sure. So for me, we were in uh Visalia, California playing against the Diamondbacks the high eight team. And I noticed I was sitting there just looking off into the grass, like just almost airspace, like headspace. And I was just, is observing what was going on, what the guys were talking about, just kind of like in my own little world at that particular moment. And as the game went on, I started to notice like, okay, there was one Christian song coming up. There's two, three, four. And before I knew it, there's five Christian songs from, from the athletes. And I'm sitting here going, man, these guys are bold. Like, you know, how can a Christian song pump them up? And then I started to realize, you know, it's not about that. What they're probably doing is they're trying to use their a minute and a half that they have to try to impact whoever's at that game. If it's a thousand fans of the game, so be it. But they're trying to impact the people that they can in their career. And so that very next day at our next home series, I switched the song, my song to a song called uh, Start Over by Flame. And I carried that song with me through the rest of the minor leagues. And, uh, you know, and we went to the uh, championship series in 2017. And Modesto had – we played from Modesto Nuts um, in California. And we had probably right around four or 5,000 fans at the game in the championship game. 
and I, I closed the game out in the championship series to win it. And I was going through Twitter and, and I was getting tagged and stuff like that. And I saw somebody ask what my walkout song was. And that hit me. And I was like, man, I was able to impact one person from my walkout song, you know, and if that led to them becoming a cry or a, a Christian, then I did my job, you know, uh, as a, as a, uh, a soldier for Christ. So hmm. that moment was pretty special for me. You know, I'm, I get kind of emotional just because it was such an uh, amazing moment. And I felt like, man, God, I, I, you know, you're not supposed to feel like you're finally worthy because you're always worthy. But, man, I was like, man, God, like, I brought you, you know, I was able, you were able to work through me in, in such a, a powerful way. And I don't care if it impacted one person or impacted one person or if I impacted 100 people. That is, is so much more meaningful to me. And now I feel like, okay, I am using my platform for the greater good. Of faith so I had that song all through my minor all through my minor leagues career in 2018 I dealt with injuries 2019 dealt with an injury setback after setback continuing to, to lean on my teammates my my fellow uh, teammates who are Christians um, revert back to my faith I went through a dark phase in 2018 when I got hurt and uh, and then you know when I got called up in my walkout song running out to the field was the same song that I changed it back to in 2017. And I was emotional running out there because yeah, basically as I'm running, I step on the dirt in, in Seattle and everything's running through my head. You know, all the things I've been through, all the trials and tribulations that God has put me through. And for me to run on the field and, and get, you know, basically God was carrying me up a mountain and we'd slip. And we'd go up the mountain and we'd slip. And we'd go up the mountain and we'd slip. And then we finally got to the mountain and he was like, you know, had you trusted me to carry you up this mountain, even though there are obstacles along the way and look at the view now. And so for me to, to run on the mountain and hear that walk I saw my family there and knowing people back home and watching was an unbelievable moment that God came through for me when there's times that I doubted him. I'd be a fool if I didn't say I doubted him. But there's times that I doubted him. There's times that I trusted him. I leaned on him. And he carried me through. And so for me, that is such a pivotal moment in my life because I can share that story and always lean back on it to the kids that I raised and whatnot that at the particular time when you don't feel like God is coming through for you or working for you, you just have to remember at some point he's going to pull through for you. And at that moment, it's going to be something so amazing you could never imagine. And so hmm. for me, that was probably you know, the highlight of my baseball career that the fact that I I'm grateful I went through all those obstacles because it made me a better man. It made me a stronger Christian. And, uh, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel was, uh, was very, very bright. We'll get back to our conversation with Art Warren in just a little bit, but want to tell you some more about our friends at IJM, the international justice mission. And what many people don't realize is that violence is a threat to people around the world who are poor. It's as much a part of daily life as hunger, disease, or homelessness, and it's often overlooked, but not by IJM. They believe that every person deserves to be safe and free from violence. It's why they partner with local authorities to rescue victims of violence, bring criminals to justice, restore survivors, and strengthen justice systems. IJM helping to protect more than 150 million people from violence across the world. But they cannot do this work alone. They need your help. They need our help in becoming a freedom partner. Some of IJM's most loyal partners in the work of justice and the support of $24 or more each month helps survivors of slavery and violence from the moment they're rescued until they're fully restored. It may not seem like a lot to give, but it's life changing. So I'm encouraging you to join me in becoming a freedom partner today. It makes a huge difference in the world. You can visit the website ijm.org tf ijm.org slash tf to become a freedom partner today we're also presented by compassion international we've talked about compassion quite a bit here on sports spectrum covid19 right now though has left seventy thousand children without a compassion sponsorship that's the capacity of an average nfl stadium so compassion and some of our pro athlete friends are teaming up to respond to this challenge and with your help we're hoping to fill the stadium with urgent support of a stadium's worth of children in 
crisis. Here's how you can help. Check out the website, Compassion.com slash team up. Compassion.com slash team up. And your donation will help these children through a critical next 12 months. Every donation helps fill a seat toward a year of needed funding. So consider joining, consider sponsoring, consider donating to Compassion and releasing these kids from poverty. Again, the website, Compassion.com slash team up and sponsor a child today. Now back to our conversation with Art Warren from the Seattle Mariners joining us here today on Sports Spectrum. September 12th, 2019, that was the day that you get the call and you make your debut. Actually, you probably got the call maybe a day before, but you're 26. And I'm so glad that you brought us full circle to how God has used you uh, and even just used the platform of a minute and a half walk-up song to be able to point people back to him. But I want you to take me to the moment when you found out you're going to the big leagues, which I think <laughs> is a pretty cool moment. Sometimes in the different people that we've had on, baseball players, uh, you know, sometimes the manager tells them and he kind of plays a little joke or something. Sometimes it's just a simple, hey, you're going to the major leagues. I'm curious because you were at double A. So that's actually a jump, right? And it was September 12th. So is the season in Arkansas finished at that point? Or are you right. still you still playing? Like walk me through the days before that led up to the moment when you get the call and you know you're going to the show. Right. So we uh, we just finished our season early September in double A. We made the playoffs. And so we were in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we were playing against the Dodgers organization. And for the last several years, you know, the Mariners have got to the playoffs in several minor league seasons against the Dodgers, and we just can't beat them. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, they've beaten us uh, in the past couple of years in, in the playoffs. So we lost to the Dodgers again, and that was on September 10th. And after the game, you know, guys are getting their lockers uh, cleaned out. We're all in the shower and whatnot. And uh, a couple of players come in. You know, there's me and about 10 other guys in the shower at this point. You know, some guys are still hanging out, like, just like, you know, you're taking it in. The season's done. That's all we have left. And uh, some, some guys are taking in that moment, you know, because in the minor leagues, you never know if you're going to play with the same group of guys again. You just, you just never do. Um, and so we had such a special a group, you know, a bunch of Christian guys, too. It was just, I'm telling you, man, this team was put together by God. It was, it was, it was a, Great year. Even though we didn't win, who cares? It was just an awesome, awesome year. So we're in the shower and some guys come in and say, hey, we're about to have a team meeting. And, you know, we're about to bust four hours back to Little Rock, Arkansas, and pack up and go home, you know. So um, so we're showering up. We're trying to get out of there as soon as possible just because you don't really hang around. you got a four-hour trip ahead of you. We come out, like, wrapped in towels still because uh, they wanted to have a team meeting. So we have a row of our coaches, you know, uh, our trainer, strength coach, pitching coach, hitting coach, manager, and our video coordinator. And so what we normally do, like I said, is you never really play with the same guys or even the same staff members at at all times. So the staff members started going around saying their piece and and they appreciated the, the opportunity to work with the group and whatnot. And it gets to our manager. And our manager goes, all right, guys, you know, would anybody like to say anything before we get, you know, we finish getting cleaned up and get out of here? And our shortstop speaks up at the time, having no idea what's about to happen. He goes, hey, guys, you know, and, and our, short, our shortstop, I'm talking about Donnie Walton. We played with each other for about three years now. And so, you know, we've all had conversations how we know, we, you know, every year we get to play together is, is a blessing because you never know when the last year will be. Yeah. You know, old kinds guys constantly moving and whatnot. So he speaks up and says, Hey guys, you know, I'm I'm really excited and thankful I got to play with you guys. Like I couldn't have been able to have the season I have without you. You know, Donnie hit three hundred on the dock in double A pretty good you know, with yeah. a handful of home runs. So Donnie had a phenomenal year as a gold club winner that year. Uh breakout year last year in two thousand nineteen. And so he's you know, saying his piece and just saying how much he appreciated the opportunity to play with us and whatnot. And our manager goes you know, Donnie, he goes, let me ask you a question. He goes, do you think you'd have been able to have this type of season without these guys? And Donnie goes, ah, you know, like, I don't know. These are my boys. Um, I just don't, I, I don't know. And, and our manager goes, well, let me ask you this. Do you think you'd be able to do that, let's say, next week in Seattle? <laughs> and so then everybody, like, everyone froze for a second, and then Donnie just dropped. And Donnie is from uh, – 
Stillwater, Oklahoma. So Donnie's parents were there and friends are there and, and you know, his hometown's two hours away. So unbelievable moment for Donnie. For me, I'm feeling like so much gratitude for Donnie and like I'm just so excited for him because I played with him for the last few years and just grinding together in the minor leagues and to see him get his name called to go to the big leagues to get the call that, you know, you all dream of was unbelievable. And knowing the backstory of Donnie and his dad, his dad's a coach and dad played minor league ball and uh, and it ended due to injury. And so Donnie got to share that moment with his dad and that was pretty special. And, and having known that backstory made it more special for me to see and witness. So I'm grateful for Donnie. I'm excited. We're excited. Yeah. And then our pitching coach and then our manager goes again, he goes, you know, Kyle, you know, so Donnie says a few things like, and then if the room kind of quiets and then our manager goes, you know, Kyle, it's a shame you're not going to get any love for what you did in the postseason because we lost and we're out. He's like, but I tell you what, you can go ahead and pack your bags because you're going to Seattle too. And so at this moment, we had two guys called up and, you know, the room's going crazy. We're all like mobbing each guy that gets called up. It's, it's awesome, you know, and then Kyle says, you know, a few things. And then our pitching coach speaks up and he goes, you know, we got our two position players. We're going to need our pitcher. He's like, we're going to need our starting pitcher. And then he goes, done. You're going to the big leagues. And so at this moment, three guys get called up and wow. we're mobbing them. Yeah, it's just awesome. Unbelievable ending to, to the year. And so everyone's mobbing them. And then the coaches start to head back into the room. And so, like I said, me and a few guys are in the shower. So we go back to finish off, rinse it off and whatnot. You know, we're ready to go. The guy, like the room, the atmosphere is unbelievable. Guys are excited. Like, so I'm one of the last guys in the shower, and they come back out and they say, "Hey, we got one more announcement." And so I'm, I'm rinsing off, and uh, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm rinsing off, and I turn the corner, and I start to head down the hallway where the shower is, and uh, the whole room is is in a U shape around the door. And in the back, my coach says, hey, we're going to need a closer in the big leagues. And then he goes, all right, you're going to the big leagues. And so everyone swore me. And, uh, man, like, I started crying immediately like I am now. <laughs> yeah. So it was uh, it was, it was, was awesome, awesome call story. You know, well, you don't really hear call stories like that too often with the with four guys getting called up at once. And from double uh, A, it just doesn't happen. Double A, man. It was, it was cool. So. Yeah. Uh, very, very special moment in my career to share that with not only myself. I've already got called up individually. That would have been great. But the fact that I get to share it with three other guys, you know, hop on a flight the next day, going to Seattle on the off day, walking around the city, like getting ready to go, just understanding like we are in the show. You know, it's it was just uh, it was crazy. So <laughs> very, very blessed to experience that, you know, with three other Christians as well. So that that made it all the more special. I'd say so. And, and you get to kind of experience this with your brothers. It's like, you know, getting called up from freshman to varsity. Basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and then, but you have three of your buddies going with you. So you can kind of like gravitate towards having those guys with you, even though you're, you're, you're suddenly in the majors, you get your first major league win, you pitch six games, you give up exactly zero runs, uh, right. strike out five and five and a third. So it's not like you just got called up. They threw you right into the fire. Yeah, I was able to get some work in for sure. I pitched uh, – so my family came up, and it was the first series in the big leagues against the Reds, so that's pretty fitting for me, you know, yes. being from Ohio and whatnot. Um, so the first two games passed, and then, the, you know, after the second game, you know, I talked to my family, and, you know, some people were missing work and whatnot, so they needed to get back and take the red eye to get back to work the following night. And uh, it would have been that Thursday. So this is Wednesday night. We're in Seattle, and I'm talking to them. I'm like, guys, look, like, if you can, just stay one more night. Like, you know, I have to try to help as much as I can with buying flights and whatnot. And uh, I said, I just have a feeling tomorrow night's going to be the night. And Skip came up to me the earlier that day. This is Thursday now, so everyone opted to stay one more game, final game against the Reds. And uh, Skip came up to me. He goes, hey, you know, uh, you're most likely not going to get in unless, you know, we're down a little bit or we're up a lot. Just – um, probably more so just, you know, for me to be comfortable going in to make my debut. Yeah. And uh, so the game kind of gets out of hand. We're down by – or it's actually a closer game. It's like it's like six to five we're down by one. And all of a sudden the game starts to get out of hand. You know, there's a two-run homer and then another two-run homer. And now we're down by five. 
or six at the particular, it was 11 to five. So we're down by six and it was the eighth inning and, I, and I'm like warm enough, just trying to stay ready. And my family came down because it was in the eighth inning, you know, the chance of me going in at, at that particular time, very, very slim, you know, with only an inning and a third left in the game. So they came down they're like, you know, if we didn't get to see a pitch, we at least want to see in the bullpen a little bit more, like, you know, just experience that with you. So they were down there and the phone rang and they saw me take off my hoodie and start to, to go on the mountain and get loose. <laughs> so my, the rest of my family ran back to their seats and my mom stayed there and she just watched me warm up in the bullpen. And then she ended up making it down to the third base line by the time that I made it out on the field and was ready to pitch. So my family got to watch me pitch in the big leagues, make my debut, even though it was only one out. Um, that was pretty special to me. So, yeah, I'll take it. I mean, so that's, that's kind of how the debut went. And then yeah. you know, I didn't pitch for a week. You know, we went – we the White Sox came in to pitch against the White Sox. And then we went to the Pirates, Pittsburgh, and I had about 50 people plus that came out over the next – over the course of the three games there. And uh, that was really special as well. You know, we're only about four or five hours away from home in Pittsburgh. And then we went to Baltimore, and that's when I started to get some work in. I pitched two games in Baltimore and then uh, came back to pitch against the Astros in the midweek and then pitched against the A's twice, I believe. So yeah, for, got, that, got that first major league win, too, which is always cool to have that. On the yeah, that was, that was awesome. That was at home. Uh, I remember it was uh, – it was a walk-off win, right? It was a walk-off. I believe J.P. Crawford hit a uh, single down the line that scored shed long. So it was uh, it was awesome. So I remember it very vividly. <laughs> That's awesome. Art Warren, this has been great, my brother. Last question for you as we wind down. and We'll have to get you back and kind of tell some more fun stories. I know just being a minor league baseball player, stories – run rampant in the minor leagues when I've talked to a lot of guys who've gone through those systems and there's so many to talk about, but let's close it with this question. We've been in obviously a difficult moment in our country. We've had a pandemic and other things going on, protests, racial injustice. I'm just curious for you, what's the great lesson that the Lord has taught you or shown you in the last three to four months? What's the lesson that God has, has revealed to you? What's the great, the great lesson that you say, okay, God, yep, this is what you're showing me here. What's that? Uh, for me, it's appreciation, um, appreciation for all that is good. Um, you know, like you said, with everything going on for me, I've been, I've been in a comfortable place because I know where I stand in my faith and, you know, it's such a difficult and challenging time in the world. I know that I am safe and, and sound in God's care. So for me, you know, it's continuing to appreciate you know, the little things and like, you know, like you said, in all aspects of this whole pandemic, you know, things that are taken away from you that you thought you taken for granted, you thought they'd always be there in terms of, you know, let's like, so just saying going, you know, to the beach or going to the movies, you know, something so small as that. So you start to apply that to much bigger things and better things. Then you start to show more appreciation. You just, and for me, you know, I just find the beauty in, in what God has done for us. And for me, I'm so excited to see how God's working right now through this pandemic, you know, are there more Christians forming because of this pandemic? You know, is he, is he able to speak to more people? Is it giving them more time to actually devote their life to Christ, to devote that first step and saying, man, like I want to become a Christian. You know, I, I didn't have the time or I, you know, I never really thought I would need it. Um, but hopefully, hopefully some good can come out of this. So that's the best way I could answer that question. No, that's really well said, Art Warren. Hey, man, listen, I'm I'm hopeful we're going to have baseball. I'm hopeful we get to see you on the mound. And either way, you got a story to share for the rest of your life. And I uh, just really appreciate you coming on and sharing your heart, your heart for the Lord, and certainly um, some baseball stories. This has been fun. Well, Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jason. And many thanks to Art Warren for joining us here today on Sports Spectrum from the Seattle Mariners. What a voice Art has, huh? That baritone, deep radio type of voice. I told him before we started taping, I said, you need to be on the radio or hosting a podcast or maybe even voicing over this podcast because you got one heck of a voice, my friend. And he, he kind of laughed. He said, I get that from everybody. And it's not surprising because he's got one of those awesome baritone voices. Thanks to Art Warren for joining us here today on the show. We also want to thank our sponsors, IJM, the International Justice Mission, 
You can join the fight to end slavery by going to their website, ijm.org slash TF and becoming a freedom partner. And Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world, a chance for you to team up with professional athletes for children in poverty right now by going to the website, compassion.com slash team up, compassion.com slash team up and donate to help release a child from poverty today. Thank you again for tuning in. Make sure you check out our website, sportspectrum.com and bookmark that page because every single podcast is there as well as articles all day long on the intersection of sports and faith and a daily devotional every morning at 6 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday to help your day get started right in the Lord with God. So check it out, sportspectrum.com and then whatever app that you're listening to this podcast on, Do us a favor, click that subscribe button so you never miss an episode of Sports Spectrum. And if you're on the Apple podcast app when you listen to this episode, man, go over and leave a review. It would mean so much to us if you did that. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts app for Sports Spectrum and just just let us know that you're there and it helps get the word out about Sports Spectrum and allows us to continue telling the stories of sports intersecting with faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum's podcast. Love you guys. Hope you all have a great rest of your day.